the key to it is prepare, prepare, and prepare again. Mm. So every single thing I do, I, I make sure that I understand it completely. And can I explain it to somebody in a simple way? Blessed love and respect, champion. What's the worst that you've ever had? Mines was waking up one day realizing that I had so much to offer the world. But because of the lack of time, poor energy, and a shitty focus, I failed to do so. Sounds familiar? Hopefully this isn't you. But can I tell you a secret? If you're not practicing these secrets, you'll be in the same position as I was. I want to share with you what I've been learning about the world's most accomplished and influential leaders so that you can become better at mastering your mind, body, and ability to be more productive and persuasive. I realize that no one is telling the real story of leadership, where there's more downs than there is ups. And this podcast is for creative, high-impact leaders who would like to achieve their highest level of performance so that we can 10x the positive impact we are making in the world. Together, let us make leadership sexy by leveling up into our highest performing self, mastering all six secrets of the world's highest performing leaders. But the real question is, how do we do it? Join me on a journey to self-mastery as I share with you the stories of the world's highest performing leaders to help you live a more purposeful and fulfilled life. This is Dina Delplesh, your high performance coach, and it's time to level up. Bless and love and respect champion. Now, this is your high performance coach. And today we have leveling up with us today. It's Terence Clark. Now, Terence is a coach just like myself, but he's also a facilitator and he's the founder of the Growth Hub and the Daily Coach with 20 years of China experience. 20 years of China experience. That's almost <laughs> as old as I am. And second to me, he's one of the most handsome guy I've ever seen. Okay. And I'm really, really curious to hear, you know, how did all this start? Because we know that he didn't start it where he is today. And I'm really curious to know what this story is like. It's really a pleasure to have you here, Terrence. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so let Thank me just roll with... it, Thanks for keeping in the handsome bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I got you. you know, I got you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let, let me start with this one. 20 sure. years, Terrence. Mm -hmm. 20 years. That's a long time to be in China. Where, where, where did, how did all this start? Um, so I was in, uh, I went to Hong Kong when I was 21, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, my dad had a bar in Wan Chai. Back when Hong Kong was cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I went for a month. Right. I was actually working for the Inland Revenue in the UK at the time. So okay. uh, I went for a month and my boss said, you're not, you'll never come back. And I said, yeah, I will. I will. I'm just going for a month. Uh -huh. And this was the first time I'd been on a plane in my life. Right. Wow. So I fly, I fly into Hong Kong and just hit by sounds and colors and yeah. just amazing. Right. And then I thought, well, okay, this is amazing. And I ended up staying for like three years. Mm. Um, and I started, I learned Cantonese um and oh, wow. then everyone's going hey no no you got to learn this language mandarin because this, this is what everyone's going to be speaking about. everyone does, does speak so um and i thought okay so i did a bit of chinese there and i went back to the uk for a bit and i did some chinese there and then i thought where to go i don't want to go to hong kong mm. um i've done that not really my not really my scene and then somebody said shanghai so i got on a plane and came to shanghai and then i was oh. going to stay for two years <laughs> and then I just didn't leave basically um, wow yeah 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 just uh very different to, to what it is now right yeah um just in terms of how fast everything's developed and definitely the, yeah. um just the infrastructure right uh the people are still the same the people are still cool um mm -hmm. in Shanghai people are are still um very very welcoming and I find that a lot of the foreigners here are pretty cool as well we're all sort of mm. of the same mindset let's let's try and come and build something <laughs> let's, let's go yeah, you know, let's go somewhere. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty fast. It's pretty fast. Uh, uh, fast paced. But one thing, Dino, after twenty years, is it's broken me a little bit. Uh -huh. I couldn't live anywhere else. Right? <laughs> London is <laughs> London is too slow for me. Right? <laughs> right? I know. I know. I know. It's like <laughs> they said after three. Like this is my thing. If you have come, if you're in China, you stay three years, there's no yeah. back. 
definitely. Yeah. After three years, you have become a part of the change, more or less. What, what I'm exactly. really curious to know is, you know, I know your Chinese, your Mandarin Chinese is really good. I've seen you presenting in Chinese, mm -hmm. did facilitation in Chinese. What was driving you back then? Like, what was your driving force? It must, there was something that was driving you. What was that? Well, when I came to China, I mean, look, people speak really great uh, English now, right? Uh, a lot of the younger generation, a lot of the older generation. But when I came to China, there was like very few people that um, spoke uh, English. And actually, before I went to Hong Kong, like the six months before I went, I bought a book and it was a Mandarin book. And I didn't realize there was a difference between Mandarin and Cantonese. Cantonese. But I spent like a few months learning, <laughs> learning Mandarin before I went oh, to wow. Hong Kong. And I was like, okay. people spoke Mandarin, of course, but I, was, I, I got that completely wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I, you know, I think it's like if you want to live somewhere, if you want to really experience something, then you have to speak the language. And mm -hmm. yeah. I think if I went to Spain, I would learn Spanish. If I went to France, mm -hmm. I would learn French um, mm -hmm. because you're in that country. And one, you want to communicate, right? You can't expect people to just speak English, although a lot of people do. Um, and if you want to have a quality of life, if you want to be able to imagine now in lockdown, if you're on your own, and you don't speak any Chinese. And um, of course, we got WeChat translating stuff now, right? And then that, but that wasn't here even three years ago when you can translate on the, on the screen, right? Yeah. So imagine you didn't speak any Chinese trying to get through this situation. Obviously, people would help you. Um, but I, I just find wherever you go, understanding the language also helps you to understand people's mindsets. So I, I have Western and Chinese clients. Mm. And sometimes it's in English, sometimes it's in Chinese. But if I didn't understand the language, the nuances, I wouldn't be able to give them value uh, when I'm coaching or when I'm facilitating. So it's, I mean, back then I wasn't thinking about coaching and facilitating, of course. I was mm. thinking, um, how do I order food, right? <laughs> <what I'm> <laughs> yeah. How do I rent an apartment? Um, how do I take this bus? How do I take a taxi? Uh, yeah. And back then it was just, just do it. And what I found was um, people were really welcoming. You know, if you got a bit of Chinese wrong, they wouldn't go, huh? Mm. It's like some, some people can be quite, pedantic with that I won't, I won't say which nation but some nations if you get a bit of the language <laughs> wrong uh I'm talking about france right they'll pretend, <laughs> they'll pretend they don't understand you right <laughs> um, <laughs> so i've always found that people were welcoming and if you made a mistake they would just try and understand you and i just i just uh, look not everybody loves it not everybody likes to learn a language and everybody can learn a language if they put their mind to it mm, I do but agree, some people yeah. don't want to Mm. Some people are in the sort of, the, uh, you know, they're very senior people. They've got a whole team around them. They don't need to learn the language. Some people mm. are only here for two years. Maybe they're just here on a secondment or a short contract. So they have basic Chinese. But my drive was because I didn't know I'd be here that long. Right? But mm. obviously my, yeah. this long, my, um, my drive was to, well, I want to experience the place I'm living. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Wonderful. I like, I like how you backed everything up and then answered the question. That was so dope. <laughs> that was so dope. And so you left the UK, dropped in Hong Kong, spent about two years. Yeah, yeah. your boss told you that you, 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 you ain't going to come back and you start learning Cantonese. Then yeah. somehow you end up in China and yeah. you, you, your part led you to being a coach and a facilitator. Where, where did that transition happen? Like, how did that happen? Well, I've always, um, so I've always had sort of senior positions in various companies in various, uh, various industries. I mean, I've done everything. Back when I started, it was manufacturing, sourcing, trading. That's what everybody did. Yeah. So, I mean, my Chinese got pretty good pretty quickly because mm. I was in factories like yeah. five, six days a week. Um, mm. No, tr no, no, no Gaoja, you know, no high speed, tr no high, uh, high speed train and I had to take buses everywhere, like five hours to Yangzhou or oh, you want to fly go to Wenzhou and then a three hour drive and things like that. So you pick up the language pretty quickly. Um, and I did that for, I did manufacturing. Then I moved into uh, manufacturing for operations for a very large, very, very large American toy company. Uh, stayed there for a bit, moved to a, uh, another sourcing company, sort of boutique little company there um, that was based out of Hong Kong. Uh, then I went to another big American company, got sick of that, and then decided to go into real estate, set up my own real estate company. Oh, wow. Um, so I'm, I've always been sales and marketing and BD, okay. uh, sort of okay. manufacturing. And I did that for a few years. And then I was asked to go and join a very big, very, very big real estate company, which I did for a bit. Um, I also had a clothing company 
I also had, uh, which did, which, which failed miserably, failed absolutely miserably. <laughs> yeah, so you got to wear my... them scars on your chest, man. Oh, wear them no, scars no, no. on your chest. <laughs> Every, everything that has not gone the way it's planned in your life, and you know this, Dino, right? Everything's not gone the way, makes you who you are now. Definitely. Right? Yeah. And you, you take something from that. And mm. if you have a growth mindset, which you know all about, oh, right, that failed, but what failed? And mm. what do I take from it? And yeah. how do I go forward? That's the growth mindset. Not, oh God, oh, you know, I mm. lost my shirt. Literally lost my shirt on this because mm. it was a clothing company. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended. Um, and, and you've got to learn from it. But actually looking back, my partner and I at the time, we had no idea what we were doing, mm. right? Um, and both from Ireland, I'm, I'm, I'm British Irish and he's a designer. We wanted to do like an Irish menswear brand uh. using sort of heritage. We had no idea what we were doing. Um, <laughs> We, we we sold actually we sold quite a lot of t-shirts a lot of hoodies and uh -huh. things but we never made we never made back our investment um so <laughs> but we learned a lot of how not mm. to do that business yeah and yeah. learned a lot on how to deal with different people different factories and things like that yeah. uh, this was like sort of while i was doing the real estate as well um then i went uh into um a big education company so in all these companies i was in nobody wanted to spend money on training so if I wanted anything doing, I wanted my team to do anything, I had to do it myself. Mm. So that's where training and facilitating came from. Okay. And also, this is where coaching came from as well. So, you know, there's, it depends on which coaching school you follow, but there should be no different. There should be a huge difference between a coach and a mentor. You know, they should all be different hats. A coach mm. is a coach. But I realized that I didn't know what coaching was. Mm. But, um, if you look back at it, oh, I'm actually helping this person do this. I'm actually walking through questions with them. I'm, mm. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So coaching has been quite a long time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Facilitating yeah. quite a long time. But as a business, uh, a year, right? Yeah. A, a year yeah. where I've just been on my own, basically. Okay. Um, but I've, been, I've had coaching clients for a long time. Like, yeah, yeah. Died, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really, I love, I love the fact that you said that. I love that you said that because I've, I've been at this full time for nine months as well. Right. And sometimes when my clients ask me like, nine months, how, how come you're so well at it? And you have shown how all of your experience literally add up to what you're yeah. showing today. Yeah. It's like, yeah. and I know a lot of leaders who want to take this step into that unknown would discount mm. their previous experiences. When yeah. no, we should not because that is a part of who you are. Coaching is a tool. Yeah. A facilitating yeah. is a tool, consulting yeah. is a tool, and then we mm -hmm. create these beautiful recipes. Yeah. Okay, and most of my listeners would be leaders who would, you know, love to take on their own maybe practice or maybe their yeah. own business. So my question to you here would be, what were some of your the biggest struggles that you face going through this transition? You know, from you know working a not the normal nine to five, you know, getting a solid <laughs> paycheck. And going, you know, into that this this space that you are in now. Well, the, the companies I've worked for have never been nine to five. Um, okay, it's always been quite entrepreneur, entrepreneurial, uh, and I am uh, I'm directive, and mm. I'm sure you might have seen from my videos. I'm quite directive. <laughs> um, I'm quite I'm quite passionate about what I do. So I've mm. never had a nine to five. It's always I was always always tried to be the first one in the last one out of the office, mm. and with always. I mean, a couple of big companies, well, three very, very big companies, um, but other companies I've been with in my own business was very entrepreneurial. So it's getting things done, bootstrapping, right? Because you're not getting any money from anyone else. Uh, yeah. Maybe you've got the budget for the year, but that's it. You're not getting any more. Uh, and if you want anything else doing it, it's do it yourself. So that's that's me. It's, it's just mm. get it done. Um, and I don't care about money. I know people say that, but I don't. I really don't. Mm. Um, I'm okay um I've, I've done all right but i don't miss having a regular paycheck i really like what i'm doing mm. and i've built enough of a business now that it's it's regular ish mm. ish but <laughs> i really enjoy, i really enjoy the freedom of it i really enjoy yeah. um uh, helping people so the, the biggest struggle is it i it's with any business though right um coaching is not for everyone right you've got to be able to talk to people you've got to have confidence in yourself yeah. And there's, well, the beauty of coaching as well is there's so many different types of client, mm -hmm. but you might get yourself too much in a niche. So you've got to be really careful of that because then your client base is limited. Mm -hmm. um, and the struggle here as well is that uh, 
not many local people understand what coaching is. All right, oh. so it's trying breaking into that market's a bit different. Um, and even if you speak Chinese, it's different as well. But the, yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing is, are you ready to do it? Take the jump. And I would always say to a client, yes. Or I would guide them towards that in that structured oh. conversation that you're having. Yes, go for it. If you're thinking about it, try it. But make sure that you've got money in the bank that you can live and you've got, right? And don't forget, mm. as a foreigner, you need to have a work permit. You need to have a company, right? So it's not so simple mm. to just go off and do it. Mm. Um, but the, the struggle is at first is, is getting clients, right? There's a lot of yeah. established coaches out there. It's getting yeah. your name out there, uh, mm. even as a facilitator. Um, it's, like, uh, it's like models, right? Models go to a casting. Um, mm. and people will choose who you like so as a facilitator you send in your 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 profile and then people choose you mm. and it could it could be on a, on a small thing and, and you don't know because you obviously don't get to to meet the clients and i always i do facilitation through various companies and i always say put me in front of the client i guarantee they will choose me i mean look mm. at this right, they will choose <laughs> me, right? <laughs> confidence uh, confidence <laughs> okay do you know and i think you i think you're the same as me the number one thing is confidence Mm. right have that confidence to do, do it if you're not confident in yourself to be able to facilitate or coach someone then you are taking away every bit of potential value for your client if you are not confident with yourself how can you help a client right mm. that that's that's the thing it's tvt right trust value attention mm. you have to get that trust with the client you have to give them value whatever they're paying you whatever they're paying you an hour even if you're doing it for free if you're doing it for for pro bono there has to be value there for that person because they're potentially going to open up to you and potentially they're going to come to some sort of epiphany or so, some sort of goal that they want to go to and you have to give them that value and of course the tension is that the tension we talk about in coaching is the healthy tension is being able to hold that conversation be able to actively listen and to be able to um really get them to open up so around that as well, another challenge is go and get some training. Don't just go into it blindly. And you can read everything, but whether you go for paid certification or whether you go for, you have a coaching group that you can work with, like men, uh, guys that can sort of mentor you and, and train you, go and get real world experience. So whatever you've done at work where you are coaching your staff or mentoring your staff, it's a completely different power dynamic because oh. you are the boss right at work and they're essentially going to listen to you in some way or you will direct that in the direction you want to go because you want them to hit a certain target or a kpi right so anyone that wants to do this go and actually get some experience right yeah, As, yeah. i mean the, the barriers for entry for coaching are low and i think sometimes too low <laughs> yeah um, yeah it really um and anyone could call themselves any sort of coach and mm. i really don't judge anyone but you have to make sure that you are confident that confident as in confidence but confident that you are going to add value to that person because mm. generally when someone wants a coach there's a reason they want a coach and if they've chosen you you have to do everything to main give them value and help them basically yeah i think yeah. i answered the question yeah you did you did you did and <laughs> there's a few things I'm, I'm taking out of it i i love the fact that you really dropped the the how does he drop the ball when you said the bar to entry is low and i love rich litvin he, he, he always say that same statement he says the barrier to entry is low but the bar to being an extraordinary coach that's high now if you're listening to this show i believe it's because you are ready to take your performance to another level and that is why i've created this show as a program in my high performance leader coaching ecosystem to help you master these high performance habits with accountability structure and guidance from me as your coach and it is free for you today as my listener join my high performance leader coaching ecosystem right now go to levelupwithdino.com again go to levelupwithdino.com and dino is spelled d-e-a-n-o and if you're listening to this in china or you're watching an episode on youtube just click the link in the description below and remember it is time for you to level up. So, and I was, as I was saying, I love the fact that you really picked on the confident piece. And I think a lot of us don't really know what confidence is. 
So mm. I really want to know when, when it comes to your your confidence as as a coach, as a facil- facilitator, and a leader. What what's what's going on inside that everybody else don't know? What, what what's going on inside? Well, uh, first of all, with confidence. So the natural confidence I have in in talking to people. So take aside the bit, take away the business side of things, right? Mm. So the natural confidence I have is just it's just me. I wasn't always confident, you know. Um, up until I was. 13 I was like I think I was five foot four um <laughs> bullied relentlessly I went north I went from Northern Ireland to the UK tiny little guy Irish accent bullied, five foot bullied, four bullied. 13 that's almost yeah. my height now <laughs> <laughs> and then something over the summer of I was 13 I went up to six foot Ooh, wow. and yeah yeah, yeah I, I, I still feel the pains in the legs you know <laughs> And then I started, um, well, okay, these guys aren't as big as me anymore. And then I got this, re- you know, this really deep, rich voice I've got now, you know. No, no, kidding. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> no, I and something, <laughs> something changed, something changed. I started really getting into music, uh, mm-hmm. getting into rugby and things like that. And that came uh, through music. Music really helped me. Um, I, I, DJing and stuff. Wasn't professional or anything. I just, I just had decks at home. Absolutely loved mm-hmm. it. Um, and then rugby and stuff, and then just I started coming out of myself, and over time started developing confidence. And mm. then I realized that I'm very good with people. And I think I honestly think that's from getting bullied and then mm. having to be funny to some extent. Mm. So t- I, you know, it took me a long time to get that. Right, yeah. it really took me a long time to get that. I remember going back to that place where I, where I went when I was th- uh, sort of a kid, and I saw a guy that had bullied me. And he actually came up and he said, I'm really, really sorry. Oh, wow. And I, and I was twice the size of him as well. He said, I'm, so, I'm also saying sorry because you're bigger than me now. And then we had, no, and then we had a drink. Oh, and wow. he was just like, look, we were kids and stuff. Yeah. And then over the years, I've realized, okay, well, that's, it was horrible. But mm. it's made me who I am. And it, it's changed the way, changed the way I am. So I had to, I got a brilliant family, really good support uh, from my family and stuff. But I think I had to make myself to something different i had to be the person that was not afraid to go and talk to someone not afraid to go and start a conversation and then when i got here and into hong kong couldn't speak the language right i've got to go and communicate with people how do i do this of course in hong kong everyone spoke english mm. um at, at, at that time and then i started getting these sort of good jobs really good jobs mm. and i came, built my way up really hard to, to get these jobs and then i was a leader of people um mm. and if you're not confident as a leader of people Right. I never, I didn't always do things right. I made lots of errors in business and things like that, but you've got to have that confidence to lead people through problems and lead through, lead through uh, people through hardship. Um, and okay. We didn't make that sale. We didn't make that sale. Okay. We've got that one. Oh, this didn't ship on time. Uh, this quality is wrong. All this sort of stuff. You've got to have that confidence to be able to go and solve the problem. Every problem is solvable. If you have the time and take the time to look at it. So one of my, bosses a guy called chris myers um years ago american guy he told me there's one thing that's always stated with me and it's it's respond don't react mm. right and and what do you mean by that don't lose your temper don't throw a fit uh, you know don't throw your your dummy out of the pram mm. um don't go shouting and screaming at people because it won't do anything stop take a breath this is before i even knew what mindfulness was right yeah. stop Take a breath, think about what you should say next. So yeah. respond, don't react. They react powerful. And that's helped me so much through life. And, and then the confidence going to the business side is um, if I'm going to facilitate something, if I'm going to, if I'm going to do a, a keynote speech, right? So I speak a lot. Uh, I spoke two days ago for University of Derby uh, on resilience and wellness um, with a couple of other great guys. Uh, Marlon Devonish is a Team GB um, uh, Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, we spoke together on that, um, and then in February I spoke to the University of Manchester MBA students on negotiation. And if you go to my website, um, terenceh.clark.com, <laughs> e- everything's up there that I do. Um, yeah. But the key to it is prepare, prepare, and prepare again. Hmm. So every single thing I do. I, I make sure that I understand it completely. And can I explain it to somebody in a simple way? 
Mm, so awful. if I'm facilitating, like if someone says, can you do this? And it's, I'll say no. I, I will say no if I can't do it. Right? If it's like mm. a really super technical thing or something. Um, but whatever I do, I will sit there with them and go, right. And we'll, we'll do like a, a pre-facilitation thing. Uh, a TTT, train the trainer. Mm. And go through everything and ask questions and make sure I understand it. Now, of course, with coaching, it's very different because you don't know what the client wants to talk about at that time. Unless, unless you've it's a special situation and they've got a real problem they want to go through, right? But I will always go through all my, all my sort of uh, things that I've learned before, um, different techniques so I can use them with people. I prepare before every session. Mm. So even though I've done it so many times and I've done so many hours of it, um, I will go back and just prepare again and prepare again and prepare again. If you're yeah. a musician, you still practice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you're a dancer, you still pra you practice all the time. Oh, and yeah. 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 It's and, and things that are around language, uh, which what we do is right. It's around language. Language is a perishable skill. Mm. You don't if you don't use the language, you will lose it. So um, at school, I spoke French and, and German and I, I did it. Uh, before I graduated, I was really good at French and German. Uh, and now I, I can understand French. I can't speak a word because I haven't used it in <clears throat> more than 20 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> I won't say how long, um, but, but you lose it. And it's the same thing with, with um, coaching techniques and things. There's a lot of it's around language, um, whether it's NLP um, or whether, whether it's, um, it's just remembering the, the, the good, the best questions to ask, mm. the most powerful questions. That comes with practice. Yeah. And there's, yeah. there's a really good uh, Maori uh, proverb, uh, which is uh, the power of the person is in the asking of the question. Mm. And that was not about coaching, obviously, because it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that. yeah. But so. that's so powerful. It's so powerful. Yeah. And how you interpret it, it's the, not the power of a coach, because I don't like that word. It shouldn't be a power dynamic. Mm. Um, but the, the skill, of the coach and the value of the coach is in asking the right questions through the structured conversation with your client to lead to impact. So that's where my confidence comes from. And people also tell me I am naturally just, just overconfident, <laughs> but, I, but I back it up. I back it up. That, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, you jump so much, so much like, oh, oh, oh. It's like, you know, <laughs> respond, don't react. I resonate 100%. And I love the fact that you, you hit on prepare, prepare. And that's what a lot of us don't really get. And the fact that preparation is a practice. Yeah, I, I love to really dive deep on this. High performance is a practice. Mm, yeah, as a performer, yeah. as an athlete, you train, you practice. Confidence, that's a practice. Yeah, yeah. you got you to gotta execute your 100%. protocol on and off. And I really love that you dived into those. I, I don't think I need to repeat much of what you said. If you're listening right now, you just rewind and just listen to that again. But, and this is the final question for today. Okay. Right? Let's say you had a time machine and we mm. step into this time machine and we had to go back, say, say 20 years back, 20 years back, and you had to have a conversation with your former self. Yeah. What would you say? And you only have, say, like, say, 30 seconds because this time machine, it took a lot of energy to get us back, so we have okay. 30 seconds. What would you tell yourself? Just carry on with what you're doing. Yeah. Because if you don't carry on with what you're doing, you won't be who you are in 20 years' time. Yeah. No regrets. What's yeah. the point? So yeah. we've got to remain in control of what we can be in control of, right? Mm. So if we, have, if we have regrets, of course, they're there. They're there. But... I mean, I found mindfulness two years ago, right? And I was a very different person before that. And it's not about pushing down emotion. It's not about, it's not about uh, rejecting emotion. It's accepting it and just working with it, right? And, and as you know as well. And I wouldn't go back and change anything because I wouldn't have had this journey. I wouldn't have met all of that. It wasn't a, it's not a smooth journey, of course. Um, um, and... I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't have the friends who I am. I wouldn't have the business who I am. I wouldn't have all these amazing experiences I've had. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything. Um, maybe don't go to Shanghai in April 2022. <laughs> but, or, 
or or go 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 to go to a different city maybe go to yunnan province for a month uh, in march 2022 uh, that would be it smart man smart man well terry i want to really thank you thank you for the humor you know thank, thank you for you. the authentic spirit and showing up yeah. with confidence i can yeah. feel your confidence through the camera and i'm yeah. sure everybody can feel yeah. that through the mic as well and for those who would like to get more connected to you and learn more about your work, where can they yeah. find Terence Clark? So if they go online, it's www.terencehclark.com. So that's T-E-R-E-N-C-E-H-C-L-A-R-K-E.com. <laughs> quite long, quite long. <laughs> um, if they want to connect with me, if they're in China on WeChat, it's just Coach Terry C. Awesome. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. Um, I'm not so much on LinkedIn anymore, but go to the website, find me on uh, WeChat. If they ever want to go onto a WeChat uh, public account, Growth Hub, one word, and that, that's me. I'm everywhere. You'll you'll find me. Uh, my my current videos in China are about up to about thirty thousand views, which is not a lot awesome. of views, obviously, but that's over a week, so that's not yeah, so yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wonderful, um, wonderful. Yeah, and thanks so much for having me, Dino. I, I love your my podcast. pleasure. It's fantastic. My pleasure, my pleasure. It's wonderful having you. Yeah. And I'll be leaving all that wonderful information wherever there's a description area so okay. that you can grab onto that. So thank you, Terry, and cheers, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, man. And, and stay safe and, and stay positive. Well, don't stay positive. Stay negative <laughs> with the testing. Yeah, yeah. Stay, yeah. stay positive, well, be well, positive. <laughs> stay stay yeah. negative, but think positive. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And we'll be, out of, we'll be out of the situation soon. Just... Growth mindset, bro. That's it, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dino. Pleasure talking to you. Now, if you're listening to this show, I believe it's because you are ready to take your performance to another level. And that is why I've created this show as a program in my high performance leader coaching ecosystem to help you master these high performance habits with accountability, structure, and guidance from me as your coach. And it is free for you today as my listener. Join my high performance leader coaching ecosystem right now. Go to levelupwithdino.com. Again, go to levelupwithdino.com. And Dino is spelled D E A N O. And if you're listening to this in China, or you're watching an episode on YouTube, just click the link in the description below. And remember, it is time for you to level up.